All right, YouTube, what's popping? All right, Twitch, what's popping? There, there are some things in Yu-Gi-Oh that really make or break a deck. And those are generally inherently powerful cards by themselves. Cards that single-handedly can fix, can make or break an archetype or that can make or break a deck, right? And I don't think that all of those are actually a good thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links because of the way the game is structured. There is no main phase two. So it's a lot harder to out certain cards and it's a lot harder to play around certain cards because you don't have a second main phase to go into after battle phase to set cards, to um, use other additional monster effects, to use other resources to make like a rank four, to, you know, pastel something or uh, what is it? Black Ship of Corn is the one that we have currently. Black Ship and Make Stroke. Uh, so because of things like that, there were some cards I wanted to talk about today that I think are are like really, really powerful in their archetype, um, but that I don't think should make their way into the duel. Uh, these cards, when the decks were either top tier or at their highest potential, uh, these cards pushed the decks to that level where they could be somewhat decent, like rogue, tier two, or competitive, or whatever. It's just a few decks today. Uh, I'm going to show you guys Necro uh, uh, Gravekeeper's cards, Noble Knight cards. Uh, Noble Knight specifically because of the fact that I play the deck. And there are a lot of Noble Knight players who talk about the fact that there are certain cards that we don't have in Duel Links that would make the deck way better. Uh, and I always say, no, we, we can't have them. It's not fair. And I, I say that for a reason. And I'm going to show you guys those cards today. One Blue Eyes card or one Dragon support, but mainly Blue Eyes. Uh, and then... Uh, UA cards and some among other things, right? So I want to start with I want to start with the the spells, or I guess I'll just start in order with what I have here, right? So we have Royal Tribute. If you control Necro Valley, both players discard any monsters in their hand. Uh, so one discard is way too powerful because specifically it's very splashable. You can play Royal Tribute in any deck that's playing Necro Valley. You don't have to have a Gravekeeper field but in gravekeeper it's even more powerful because they have a card like stell to get back to those cards it doesn't matter right and uh that inherently is already a control deck in this game and if you discard your whole hand and then you stell back for like a headman or one other card like a spiritualist or whatever and you normal summon headman special to spiritualist then you just discarded like your opponent's outs like their monster outs to your supernaturalist and you summon a supernatural uh which is pretty fucked up uh imperial tombs this card is searchable off of supernaturalist Backing up your Supernaturalist with a counter trap to stop them from Karma Cutting, I mean, from like Regeki Breaking or Book of Mooning or uh, Karma Cut, all that stuff, being able to stop them from like removing your Necro Valley or removing your Supernaturalist when it's already big, it's usually like 3,300 attack or something, uh, is crazy. That would probably literally push Gravekeepers from like a rogue slash anti meta strategy all the way up to tier one. And there are so many graveyard centric decks that that this deck specifically being tier one would probably not be okay for the game. I like it. I like du um, dual links gravekeepers, and I'd like to try it, uh, but I don't think that this card should come to the game because if it does, it's going to make things way crazy. Uh, next, we have up three noble knight cards: uh, Sacred King Cu uh, Noble Knight Custodian, which is like the mini form of Sacred King Custodian, the rank four exceed. Uh, if you control a noble arms equipped spell, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon one. Custodian, you can only special summon one Noble King Custodian per turn this way. If a Noble Knight Synchro exceeds or Link using this card, uh, if someone using this card on the field gains this effect. This special summon card, um, you can special summon one Noble, you can normal summon one Noble Knight monster in addition to your normal summoner set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck except Noble Knight monsters. Right. No biggie. I think the deck really doesn't need to play any non Noble Knight cards. Uh, I think I played a Utopia a while back, and then before that I played a... Um, uh, now I play a Tsukuyomi. I don't think that... Because if I get stuck with the trap in hand, I can discard the trap and draw two, which is really cool. Um, but I don't particularly think that you need to play any non Noble And this card, just first of all, in, in like mirror matches and in... In mirror matches and in uh, any sort of warrior uh, toolbox... Which cards don't belong? The cards that I'm talking about right now. Uh, this is just a few though, Raz. Um, in like warrior matchups and in the Noble Knight Mirror, if you can stick and exceed to your opponent, if you can stick a, an equip to your opponent's warrior monster, um, then you can special summon this card for free. So now they have to out this before they out your cut, before they out your your Madra, before they out your your brothers, your Dristan, whatever you would summon. 
because this is a free body and this is going to allow you to get an additional normal summon if this sticks and they allow you to use it for an exceed or a synchro right um almost all modern hand tracks yes but i'm talking about specifically in archetype cards yes i don't think we need any i think we need one more hand trap and i'll talk about that in here a second you can probably see it on the screen but um specifically i'm talking about like archetype cards because they'll make the deck they'll push decks way too hard i think um so you can like our fitted to your opponent's back row then summon this or summon this by uh, our fitted touring you know one of your opponent's monsters if they're playing a warrior deck and if not you can just like summon your monster equipped and if they're like trying to wait for you to make a play you can just special this and it's like okay well now you have to do something about this if you don't then you're allowed to play the game even without it uh i think a lot a lot of what happens in duel links is they wait for you to equip and then when you equip they pop your monster uh before you can activate the effect of madrod or boars or whatever because they want us two for one you or two for two you because they're using that they're usually using a rageki breaker or karma cut so they want you to go two for two uh, they don't want to go two for one to remove just the Madra or just the Merlin, especially because Merlin has a graveyard effect if they don't have a Karma Cut and they have a Regeki Break. Uh, they want to wait, or even like a Book of Moon, things like that. Uh, and the reason why is because it's better card advantage. But when they do that, you get a chance to summon Custom it, which is usually a very bad thing for your opponent. Uh, it's just a free monster on board. Luckily, it's not considered a normal monster. If it was, you'd actually be able to summon Gawain. Um, but I think if this card was in the game, we'd also probably get go like people would probably play more of the wanes because they because they don't um oh you know what i just realized you can't see chat because uh it's like in a really weird spot where's the chat box from let me turn on the chat box you can't see there it goes so now we can see chat sorry about that um this car would be inherently way too powerful for the game is merlin in the game yeah merlin doesn't belong in the game but but it's here <laughs> but but it's here <laughs> I don't think Merlin belongs, but it's here. Um, and then let's talk about Excalibur first. We're going to skip over the, the other normal light card. We're going to come back to it. Excalibur, this card specifically doesn't belong in the game because it stops your noble knights from being targeted by your opponent's card effect. Uh, and you can also banish it from your graveyard, except during the turn of a sentry graveyard to quick exceed over a noble knight exceed so you can if you have excalibur and merlin in the graveyard you can actually otk way harder with this card and it also protects your monster on field as long as this is equipped to it it makes it so that your monster on field is super safe from things like uh karma cut regeki break book of moon um the paleozoic book of moon things like that uh sakuretsu armor any cards that would target it that disrupt your plays excalibur stops that uh, and I think that's that's way too strong. I, I don't I don't think this card belongs in the game. I would love to see it. I would love to see if they implement it to see what it would do, but I'm almost certain it would just get immediately banned. Um, because it's it, it does too much. Stopping things from targeting when the best the best trap card in the game free is Karma Cut. Second best, probably Ragaki Break. Those are the two best traps in the game, and they target. And um, they're also two for one. So if you have an Excalibur on something, like they can't even two for one themselves to they have to karma they have to regeki break your excalibur before they can out your monster that's really really fucked up uh, and then we'll come back to the last normal knight card uh, also she has two swords kind of kind of litty morgan enchanters of avalon this is a hand trap this is a noble knight hand trap this came out in soul fusion so it's really recent it came out at the same time as custom i think in the actual TV. But here's the problem with this card. It's good. I think it's a phenomenal card. Let me read it off to you. When your opponent activates a card or effect while you control a Noble Knight monster and a Noble Arms Equip spell, you can send this card to your graveyard, destroy one Noble Arms Equip spell you control, and if you do, negate that activation. You can only use this effect of Morgan Enchanters of Avalon once with them. This is fucked up because now, if you activate a Noble Knight Equip spell and they want to book your monster, they want to Karma Cut your monster, they want to Regeki Break your monster, you can discard this, destroy that equipped, bring it back if you have an additional equipped in your hand, you can still play the game. You just, you just, you just counterplayed uh, probably two back row or something, like ridiculous. Or even more so, if you've already summoned your Sacred King, or you've summoned a Dristan or whatever, and you have a, a Dristan equipped with a, with a, with a back row, I mean, with a, with a Noble Arms equip spell, and you've already used its effect used its effect last turn or whatever you can destroy that equip bring it back pop another card on the field because of dristan's effect when it re-equips 
and you also get to uh you also get to discard not discard you also get to destroy uh negate the the, the effect or the card that morgan negates like this is this is way too good i this is like the reason why i kind of want to play the deck in the actual tcg which is really cool also because of the fact that we have the trap um because the trap exists uh, until no arms need it once again you can dig for this like if you're actually playing a more like controlling variant if you set the trap you can you can dig for this on start of your opponent drawing a card you can dig two or whatever look through the top two. Oh, cool i got my morgan let me sit on my morgan now i have a morgan in hand like you can try to play but no you can't play because if you play i'm morganing it and then i'm gonna quick exceed for my uh noble king um after I destroy my equip spell, bring it back, then I'm gonna summon my Dristan from the deck. Dristan will re-equip the equip spell. Boom, look at that. Like you, you, I interacted with your board twice off of this card and one other, you know? Like, I think this card is crazy good and it doesn't belong in Duel Links. And I hope Konami understands that because they've been giving, hi Oreo, they've been giving like decks cards that they don't need. And I think this is one of those cards. Next, onto a blue eyes card or a blue eyes it's not technically a blue eyes card. You can use this in like the red eyes slash dragon deck too. Uh, but return to the dragon lords. Target one level seven or level eight dragon in your graveyard. Special summon that monster. If a dragon's monster would be destroyed by battler card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. You can't out azure eyes anymore. Oh, they summoned azure eyes, but you have something strong enough to attack over it. You can attack over it so that they don't get a free plus during the next turn. No, the fuck you can't. Now you have to deal with return to the dragon lords. Oh, I have a Rageki break for that. Return of the Dragon Lords. Oh, I have a tribute to the Doom for that. Return of the Dragon Lords. Like, I think OMG Beanie is playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Someone over here said OMG Beanie is playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Watch him. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh today. Right now, I'm just looking at some cards that don't belong in Duel Links. Uh, this card, it, it, like, Blue Eyes doesn't have enough recursion. I think that's its, like, biggest brick issue currently. Like, in the actual Duel Links version, they only really have Silver's Cry. And Azure Eyes Silver Dragon. A card like this would be perfect if it was just that first effect. And they got to special summon back their alternative, special summon back their regular blue eyes, their spirit, whatever. That All of that is fine and dandy. This graveyard effect, on the other hand, is not fine and dandy. This graveyard effect would make the deck immensely harder to deal with for, for decks that only can hit over it in battle, that can beat over their monsters in battle. Uh, like Black Wings, Noble Knights and uh, Karakuri that just make bigger monsters than they do and just beat the shit out of Blue Eyes Dragon, you wouldn't be able to do it anymore. Uh, I have one other spell, and then after that, it's on to extra deck monsters. UA Power Jersey. Equipped only to a UA monster, it gains 1,000 attack and defense. Also, if it battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is doubled. I don't think I have to say anything else. It can make a second attack during the battle phase if it attacks over a monster. During the standby phase, banish the equipped monster, but if it's sent to the graveyard because the monster was returned to the hand, then you return this card to them. Okay, none of that matters because you summon this. And you summon a Dreadnought Dunker. You make Dreadnought Dunker 3,500 attack or 4,000 if you have UA Stadium, then you push through a motherfucking monster in defense position on the field because you book of mooned it because you're playing money cards you paleozoic canadia because you're playing money cards and you kill that motherfucker over one monster and if it doesn't kill it in one monster with double piercing damage you attack over another fucking monster and you pop a card with this motherfucker as you do it this card's ridiculous this card is crazy I don't want this card in the game, and UA is a deck I actually played competitively at two regionals, almost fucking top 32 to one of them. Because of this card, and Dreadnought Dunker. The exact thing I'm telling you about is why I almost won. Why I almost got an, a, a, national in, a Nationals invite with UAs. I didn't. I've only got an invite with Ritual Beasts and with Satella Knights, but I tried to get it with this deck too. Let's move on to a card for Triumids. Uh, Triamids have a few level 3 monsters. Let me show you guys. For you dual links players, I'm sure you've seen this archetype around Triamids. Two of their two of their four main deck monsters are well first of all, it's like an Egyptian looking archetype, so I think it's fucking sick. 
I loved Egypt. I love everything Africa. I love black people. That's my shit. Black excellence, baby. Anyways, let's, and they got pyramids and shit. This shit's tight. Two of their main monsters are level three. One allows you to get an additional normal summon if you have a face up field spell. The other allows you to uh, shuffle a field spell from the graveyard, a triumph card from the graveyard back into the deck to boost all rock monsters by 500 attack and defense. That's not in time of turn. It's a permanent boost. If you get these two people, if you get these two out on the field, and you summon a Gorgonic Guardian, during either player's turn, you can detach a material, make a face-up monster's attack zero, and negate its effect. Make its attack zero first, then negate its effect. Which means that if it's an effect monster, if it's a non-effect monster, you can still make its attack zero. You can still make blue eyes zero. Because this changes stats, you can do it during their battle phase, which means you can do it during the damage step, which is absolutely insane. This card is extremely hard to out. Because of the fact that you have to have a back row to deal with it, Forbidden Lance in this deck would be crazy because of Gorgonic Guardian. If you can just sit on a Guardian with two negates, your opponent damn near can't play the fucking game. Can't play the game. These effects last until end of turn once per turn. You can target a monster on the field with zero attack and destroy. So if you do this during your turn, you can negate a monster's effect, make a zero attack, pop it. Then you can do it once during your opponent's turn to just negate the effect. It'll go back to its original attack. Who gives a shit? You summon your Sphinx. You beat over that nigga. It's going to be like 3,000 attack. It's going to be 3,500 because of things like Cruiser. Uh, I'm sorry, because of things like King Golem or because of things like Dancer. This thing gets huge. This card would probably make... Trimids Tier 1. Hey, Remy. Hey, Remy. This card would probably make Trimids Tier 1. Trimids has really no other problems except it can't, it can't really use its extra deck frame. The only other problem I see with Trimids is that they don't have a consistent level 3 engine, and Sentry St Soldier of Stone would fix that. I think this card would be fine because they can summon Soul of Silver Mounter, they can have like a rank 3 toolboxy feel. Uh, but we're not talking about cards I think we need yet. I think we're talking about cards we don't need, and this is one of them. Another one is another Exceed monster named Battle Boxer Lidio. It's two level 4 Battle Boxer monsters. If a battle monster monster you control will be destroyed by battle card effect, you can detach a material from this card instead. Instead of destroying one of those monsters, just protect him. He's 2200 attack. And when you detach a material from this card, it gains 800 attack. So it goes up to 38 with zero materials. You protect the castle list. You make it 3800. You attack over everything. You beat the shit out of them with the card. And when you do, it gets bigger. And you summon another one. And then you just have two big ass beaters on the that are hard to out. They gotta be out of with Karma Cut. Once again, Forbidden Lance would be amazing in this deck. It's I think it's already played in this deck anyway because you want Nova Kaiser to survive, so we don't need this. This is essentially a floodgate monster. This is essentially a do you have three removal spells to kill me monster? And that's that's not okay. This card was really, really whack to play against in the TCG with a Kaiser Coliseum. Very hard to out. Very frustrating. Makaba! I want this card in the game the least. I hate Alistair the Invoker. I hate Invocation. I hate Magical Meltdown. I hope the TCG also takes a Duel Link's note and fucking does something about the Invoked Engine. Fuck Invoked. Macabre. When Alistair the Invoker plus one light monster, once per turn when a spell trap or monster effect is activated, quick effect, you can send one card of the same type, monster spell or trap from your hand to the graveyard to gate that vision if you do. Banish that card. This is ultimate providence on legs. This is ultimate providence on a 2500 body that you can summon off Alistair. That you can boost with Alistair to make 3500 attack to hit everything. I don't even think I need to explain why we don't need this card. I don't think I have to tell you. If we don't have Cyber Dragon Infinity, we don't need this. This banishes the card. This is significantly more fucked up. The Invoked Engine is already one of the strongest things in Duel Links, unhindered. If they unlimited the cards, it would, it's already one of the strongest things in the game. We, we don't need Makaba. Okay, Raijin would be cool. I don't know if we have Raijin. The Book of Moon Wind one, that's fine. But this guy, absolutely not. On a lighter note, and on a happier note, I think there's cards that I think we could put in Duel Links, and they'd be totally fine. Two are hand traps, because we already have two hand traps in Duel Links. I believe we have, I'm sorry, we have, we have a multitude. Let me erase all these. As far as I know, we have Battle Boxer Veil. 
That wasn't rage, it's just the truth. Fuck Alistair. Karibo, DD Crow, Skullmeister. Right, these are the hand traps I know of in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Let me know if I'm missing any in the comment section, please. Uh, and then I would like to see two more hand traps added. I would like to see Effect Failure added because this card is actually pretty easy to play around. It says during your opponent's main phase, quick effect, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and target one effect monster your opponent controls and negate the effects of that face up monster your opponent controls until the end of the turn. This can only be activated during the main phase, not the battle phase, so it doesn't stop things like uh, Gamble Dragon. It doesn't stop him. It doesn't stop things from activating in the graveyard. It's pretty cool. It doesn't stop uh, things from activating during standby phases, like Azure Eye Spirit Dragon, and it doesn't stop battle phase. I mean, it doesn't stop um, effects during your main phase. So you can't use this to stop your opponent from using a Floodgate monster against you during your own turn. Because it's only activatable during your opponent's main phase. So this would be this is a pretty good hand trap, kind of weak, but also strong enough. You can stop the setup plays before things happen, right? So you can stop the the gladiator beasts, you know, laddering up. You can stop stuff like that. Uh, you can stop Madrat's effect. You can stop Sage. This is also Surge Wolf Sage. Maybe Blue Eyes would get a little bit better with a card like this. Maybe I'm not thinking properly, but I think this card would be pretty good for the Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Links meta. Uh, and then Draw and Lockbird. I just don't like Karakuri and and um archfiends uh what are they called archfiends infernities i don't like infernities and i also don't like um black wings so i guess i just want to hose black wings also it's just another hand trap i think there's nothing wrong with having a few more hand traps in the game um i think it's relatively healthy like hand traps are healthy as long as they don't cover too much ground and all of the hand traps that we have in the game kind of are really niche i think the only ones that like would that do a lot are dd crow and skullmeister these two do a lot because Duel Links' meta is really graveyard reliant, which is super weird for it being not the real Yu Gi Oh! And as I said, I do want Upstart Goblin in the game. I think we need like more consistency, even though we have 20 slash 30 card decks, with even things like Balance or Destiny Draw, stuff like that that lets you draw cards, uh, or even pick what you're drawing. I still think that the game is extremely inconsistent, which is really odd for a game with such little cards in your deck. Uh, maybe it's the Duel Links' algorithm, maybe it's not, I'm not sure. But because of that, I'd like to see a card like Upstart Goblin. Or, or a pot of draw spell. A uh, pot of duality. Pot of... Um, probably a pot of that you can activate early in the game. A uh, pot of desires. Pot of... I think it's just desires, duality, or Upstart Goblin. I don't, I don't want to see a card like uh, Pot of Extravagance in the game. I don't want to see a card like the newest pot, Pot of Prosperity in the game. Those let you re resource your extra deck to draw cards, and some decks don't even use their extra deck, like a deck like Amazonas, a deck like UA, a deck like um, Arrow Mages. They don't really use their extra deck too much, so if they have six extra decks, seven extra deck spots already, if they have the full seven extra deck spots, they can activate it, draw two, and not care. They can activate it, draw one, discard, like, banish random three, and not care. Uh, so Upstart would probably be the best fit. It also makes it way harder for you to kill your opponent, and a game where there's so many battle-based hand traps, I think that's I think that's pretty good. We also have Kiteroid, uh, which I have to pull up on screen here because apparently Kiteroid is not in the actual Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. I actually didn't know that. I have no clue. Uh, so this is another card that I'd like to see. I actually don't like this card at all. This card pisses me. This card makes me fucking mad, but it's fine. Uh, it's easy enough to play around. Those are the cards that I would like to see either not added to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Or, uh, in the case of these three, Effect Valid, Drill and Lockbird, and Upstar Goblin, I would like to see them added to the games. If there's any cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG that you think should or shouldn't be in the game, leave them in the comment section below. This is Beanie Thuggish. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please, 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 please. I'm hoping to go up in subscribers at some point. I've been sitting at the same number of subscribers, which is like 212 for like months now. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out.